How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we are gonna be learning how to make this satisfying style animation. We're gonna learn a little bit of rigging, we're gonna learn a little bit of shading, have some fun with lighting and make a really cool animation. Now this tutorial is in partnership with Concept D and we are launching a competition with this tutorial. All you'll need to do is take your version of this tutorial and just kind of change it up, remix it, do what you want and submit it on Discord. Now, if you join the Discord link in the description, there's gonna be a, a channel in there called competition submissions. If you can't figure it out, just go to the general section said, hey, I need some help. My moderators will help you out. So the way it works again is take what you learned from this tutorial, you know, take the ball and all the stuff circling around it and change the materials, change the lighting, change the animation. And so you'll need to do two things, submit it on Discord and go on Twitter and tag me and Concept D and use the hashtag Ducky3D Sphere. And um, just post it on Twitter so I kind of retweet it, interact with you guys, as well as interact with you guys on Discord. Um, two weeks from the day this tutorial came out, I will be picking a winner. Now, the winner will be getting from Concept D a free subscription of Adobe. I will be giving away my shading course, my motion graphics course, and a free copy of Real Time Material. So that little bundle of goodness, a winner will be getting again two weeks from today. Tag us on Twitter, put it in Discord. That is linked in the description. Lastly, I'm using Blender 3.0 in this tutorial. It's in beta now. If you wanna get the beta build of Blender 3.0, hit the link in the description, go ahead and download it and uh, open it up but you do not need it. You, everything is perfectly compatible in just the latest stable build of Blender. With all that craziness out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. All right, so we are here in Blender 3.0. I'm actually gonna go ahead and make this UI a little bit bigger for you guys. If you didn't know you can do this, this is what I like to do with my just personal viewport here, is just make this a little bit bigger, easier to look at, and look kind of nice. All right, so. What we need to do first is create our main object and create our material. So shift A, we're gonna search and get an icosphere. Click this drop down here. And we're just gonna pop this up to be nice and round and smooth. So let's make the material first. It's actually a very simple wood shader. All right, so we're gonna go to the shading workspace here. Now quickly, one of the great things about the uh, Concept D7 Pro that I'm using here is the screen. Specifically when you're shading, it's good to know exactly what you're looking at, your values, your blacks and whites. It has a 100% Adobe RGB color gamut screen. It's a 15.6 inch display with a 4K UHD screen. So it's an incredible screen. I have no complaints with it. It's super, super clear. Zoom in here, I'm gonna click new. And let's go ahead and get some nodes going here. So shift A, get a color ramp. We're gonna be manipulating some color here in just a little bit, but we're gonna deal with black and white first. That's kind of the rule of thumb. Deal with black and white and then color it. It's kind of like a logo. All right, so get your Musgrave texture and then we're gonna get a noise texture. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this into there. Plug this into there. And they were going to get in a, uh, let's go ahead and enable the Node Wrangler add-on. So in ODE, we're going to get this Node Wrangler here. So edit preferences add-ons. And then we're going to control T. So we're going to get that mapping set up and use the object, use the object coordinate. All right, so let's go ahead and get our detail here to 16. You can kind of play with your scale a little bit. And let's bring that roughness up. And then here in the Musgrave, we can bring that detail up to five, and that is pretty much it, and dimension down to zero. So now we have just some craziness going on here. We do wanna go ahead and use just a little bit of this noise texture, so we're gonna get a mix RGB. We're gonna plug it right there, and let's plug the factor of the noise texture straight into color number two. And what this is gonna allow us to do is to just kind of utilize part of this noise texture and not the entire thing. So we have full Musgrave texture here and then we can go ahead and bring it in like this. And then now you can go ahead and play with scale, maybe bring your dimension back a little bit, but we have some wood. Now we need to do one more thing to really distort this and make it look like wood and that's gonna be with a wave texture. So shift A, search wave texture, plop it right there. I don't think we really need to touch any major settings here. Maybe bring your scale down to uh, maybe one for now. And then we're gonna do the same thing, get a mix RGB. So we can just utilize part of this 
um, this wave texture because right now it's just completely taking away all of our detail. And you really notice a more obvious effect here. If you bring this factor over, now we're starting to stretch the wood and it's looking like wood. And there we go. We have some wood and let's go ahead and get this color going. So we're gonna go from dark to light in the dark again. So keep this at a black color. Let's get another one. Hitting the plus icon, we'll bring it right over here and let's get brown. Brown is found in these areas here. Make it a pretty dark brown. And then we're gonna click the plus icon and um, we're gonna go ahead and make this guy a little bit brighter and make this guy a little bit brighter. You know, natural color is a bit of a gradient sometimes in nature. And then we're gonna go ahead and make this color kind of a khaki. So have a light khaki color. Let's really kind of work with it here. And then on, I'm gonna bring it over, click on this guy, I'm gonna hit the plus icon, bring him over, make it lighter, lighter color. And then we can go ahead and goof around with our color and then play with our mix on the factor here. And you can play with the scale. And it's what's great about this wood texture is the scaling drastically changes. And when you change really anything on this material, it pretty much drastically changes the whole look of your material. And that's actually really fun and a fun little detail about this wood shader. So there you go. Let's go ahead and get some bump going. So shift A, B, U, M. We'll get that bump. We'll plug the normal right here. And then we will plug the, uh, well first we need to get a, first let's get in a color ramp so we can kind of crunch in the detail that we plug the mix RGB into our color ramp. So let me see if we can see that. Mix RGB into the color ramp color goes into the height and then now everything's bumped out what i want to do is just kind of flatten out the lighter portions of this material let's bring that strength down a little bit so now we have a pretty sweet wood texture that we can kind of bring this up kind of play around with that and there we go have some fun, change colors if you'd like, but that is our wooden texture. Now let's go ahead and create these spheres that are gonna be circling around it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift A, and we're gonna go get a curve circle, and then we're gonna hit Shift A. Actually, we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate this. So Icosphere 001. Let's get a constraint. So constraints are right here. Add object constraint, follow path. We're gonna get our target and click and click Bezier Circle. And so what's gonna happen is if you click on this circle, this sphere is following it. And then you can take your sphere and shrink it down. And then I'm gonna hit the tilde key, it's right above the tab key. I'm gonna click the Bezier Circle. And then I'm just gonna get the sphere to barely touch the side and then just make sure you're scaling on your sphere however you like it to look. So make it just big enough to where it has a nice amount of visual white, but not too big to where it's taking up a lot of space. All right, next thing we need to do is animate it so that it looks like it's actually rolling on the sphere. So here in your edit preferences here, go to animation and switch default interpolation to linear. We're gonna make this a seamless loop. We're gonna stay with the default 250 frames. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the sphere, go back to our constraints, I'm gonna hit the back arrow to frame zero, click on offset, go to the end, and then type in 100. What that's going to do is give you a full 360 rotation. It's gonna go around just like that. The reason why we're doing it that speed, basically at 250 frames is gonna be at a certain speed. So if you wanna make it faster, you would drop the amount of frames and move your keyframe. To make it slower, do the opposite. Um, the reason why we're doing it slowly is because it needs to be as satisfying to look at. It needs to be nice to see. Um, things that are going really fast are just kind of hectic and kind of cause anxiety for certain people. So this needs to be something that's just nice to look at, slower speeds. So now that we have that, let's go here in EV and preview this here. Notice the sphere is not looking like it's actually rolling. So 
one thing we're going to do is click on the sphere, go to the transform settings, and we're going to rotate it this way at a positive value. So let's go ahead and troubleshoot this and see how many rotations it needs to go. Of course, it needs to loop, it needs to rotate 360 degrees, and it can do that multiple times. So I'm going to go ahead and do 360 times 5, and I might click Enter, and that's going to give me 1800. Now I forgot to actually add my keyframe, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over here, I'm going to click I, we're going to go to the very end and type in 1800. One, eight, zero, zero. So that's 360 rotated five times. Oh, I actually hit the jackpot there. So now it's rotating around. Now you'll want to play with that. Say if your, your yours looks a little bit different, your parameters are different, scaling is different, you might need to do 360 times four or 360 times six. Um, eventually you'll get to where it actually looks like it's rotating around. What I'm going to do here on this material, I don't like how the wood looks on that one, is I'm going to go to the material settings. Actually, we'll go straight to the shading workspace. I'm going to click this two so, it's a, so we make a duplicate. And let's bring that, um, looks like it needs to be the scale of the noise texture and the scale of the wave texture. So it doesn't look so small. It still looks like a piece of wood, but it's not so puny. Something like this. Play with that scale and the wave. There we go. And you can always make duplicates like that. Just click that number. So here's the next trick is now you click here, hold shift, click here. I'm gonna hit Alt, I'm gonna hit Shift D, and then just click on the wire. I'm gonna hit R twice and rotate it around. And that's all you're gonna need to do. Just go ahead and do that again, Shift D, solely click on the wire, rotate, and I'm actually just rotate it like that so it goes the opposite direction. And that's all you need to do. Go ahead and I'm gonna speed through this. Make sure things are not intersecting, so you're going to need to move things around and just duplicate a couple of these guys around your scene and have a bunch of them rotating around. Now, make sure they aren't intersecting. I mean, if you want them to intersect, by all means, make them intersect. It just doesn't make it look very real. Not that any of this is real, but you can have some fun. See, we have an intersection, so we move it around. Looks like we might have another intersection. There we go. So go ahead and add a bunch in your scene and we'll come back. All right, so here I have my scene. I would add a couple more just to kind of fill it out. But again, this is just for the tutorial. You can perfect that later if you'd like. I seem to have a goof up here. So there we go, we have this. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly get a displaced floor and that's to kind of make it look really modern. I like the modern look. Keep it flat, keep it simple. That's also why I like this computer. It has just a really nice modern sleek design. You know, you have a lot of gaming computers and a lot of gaming computers kind of look the same. This one is very different from that look. It's white, it's sleek, it's clean. You have those nice amber lights below the keyboards. I genuinely like that. I think it's great. So if that's something you're into, this is definitely a great computer just on the aesthetic wise. It's just a great looking computer. Of course, there's many, many other great features about this laptop. So I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this guy here. Give it one zero zero on the subdivisions. You don't really need that many, but this isn't a very computationally heavy scene. I'm going to add a modifier with the displacement on it. Click new. I'm going to go here, image or movie. We're going to go to clouds. Bring that depth down, bring that size up. I'm going to shade smooth. All right. Shift A, camera, control alt zero, snap that to view, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the camera. Now we're gonna go to the orthographic view. I love the orthographic view. It's just fun to work with and just makes things just nice looking. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and start lighting it. I'm gonna go here to cycles, make sure I'm using my GPU, edit, preferences here. We're gonna go to your system. Now I have the Quadro RTX 5000 and my Intel i Core <laughs> Intel Core i7. This computer has some great power with it. That's what I'm working with here. Make sure you're using optics to get that nice speed. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna drop down and use the EV render engine just to kind of preview my lighting. 
So shift A, light, we're gonna go get an area light. I'm gonna hit G to move it over. R twice, may bring it up. Scale it up pretty significantly. Maybe bring it back some more. We want it to cover up this whole ground plane. Click on the light, we're gonna give it maybe 800 on the strength. There we go. So that ought to look nice at that direction. I do wanna go and change it to a disc just for reflections. It looks better in reflections in my opinion. I like the disc shape. I'm hit R twice, I'm hitting G to move it around, hitting R twice to move it in case you need that. All right, let's go ahead and see how that looks in cycles. So it looks pretty good here in cycles. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a nice kind of blue background. The blue looks nice with the background of the wood, make it really rough. This is going, you know, the, the satisfying style and this roughness looks really good. If we give it a good cycles preview here, looking pretty good on that. So now that we have this whole animation, I'm gonna show you how to get a really fast render time I'm gonna remove this intersection. Remember, only select that wire to move things. So now that we have this going on, I'm gonna go ahead and optimize my render settings because it cycles and it can be annoying. You can use EV if you'd like. So here on light paths, I'm gonna give my total at one, glossy at one, give everything a one. Everything I'm doing here, I learned from the great Blender guru in terms of optimizing your render six. Turn off your reflective and refractive. And then here on your render, where it says render, that's the official render, I'm gonna give myself 50 samples. Click on this little card icon and I'm gonna go ahead and click denoising data. Let's go here to compositing. Click use nodes, I'm gonna hit shift A and get a viewer. Shift A search viewer. I'm gonna hold down Shift, right click to combine those two together and then get that denoising node. And we'll use noisy normal, noisy albedo. All right, now let's click render and check out that render speed. All right, so those fans are in high gear and we have a 19 second render per frame. So that's pretty good, that's incredibly fast. Now two things I wanna do. One is turn on motion blur, just to give it a little bit more realism. And then here in my scene, I do wanna turn up my displacement strength, because I wanna go ahead and play with that lighting. All right, cool. So there we go, that is it. We'll just check it out here in Eevee just to see how we're looking. And that is how you create this animation. Now, one thing I didn't do that you can do, just kind of leave it up to you, is you can go ahead and click all of these wires right here, parent them to this big guy and rotate them. Gives you another level of animation. I'm gonna leave all the rest of this up to you to play with. Again, for the competition, the idea is, you know, taking this idea of these spheres going around the big sphere and then change everything up. Uh, my best tip is, you know, change the material, change the background, change the lighting, change whatever you want, just to make sure you have a sphere with a bunch of other spheres rotating and rolling around it. So with that being said, good luck with your submission. Two weeks from today, it'll be due. Tag me on Twitter, tag Concept D on Twitter, send it in the Discord. I'll be retweeting and commenting there on Twitter as well and looking at your stuff on Discord. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you Concept D for partnering with me here on this tutorial and the competition, and I will see you in the next tutorial.